In this problem, we are being asked to write a cubic equation having roots 5 and 1 plus 3i. Let's note that whenever you are asked to write a cubic equation, that equation that you write will have the form ax to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals 0. We're going to write a polynomial third degree equation that is equal to 0. Now, a third degree equation implies that there would be three solutions. The directions have only given us two roots, 5 and 1 plus 3i. However, by the complex conjugates theorem, we can determine what the third root would be. The complex conjugates theorem states that for any polynomial equation with real coefficients, if a plus bi is a root, so is a minus bi. In this case, we know that a plus 3i, or 1, rather, 1 plus 3i is a root. So that must mean that 1 minus 3i is also a root. So we are going to write a cubic equation having the roots of 5, 1 plus 3i, and 1 minus 3i. Let's begin. I will approach this problem by writing an equation with two factors. And when I say two factors, I mean two quantities that are multiplied together. The first quantity will be x to the first, and the second quantity will be x to the second. If I multiply these two together, that will give me an x to the third, which is the kind of equation that I'm looking for. If I first consider the root of x equals 5, if x equals 5 is a root, x minus 5 must be a factor. Because if I have an equation that's equal to 0, with x minus 5 as being one of the factors, setting x minus 5 equal to 0 will give me the root of x equals 5. The quadratic part of the equation I'm about to write will be a quadratic that has the two solutions of 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i. If I am able to write a quadratic that has the roots 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i, and then multiply that quadratic by x minus 5, that will give me the, the cubic equation that I'm trying to find. Again, considering the root of x equals 5, there must be an associated factor of x minus 5. And then, to write a quadratic with the roots of 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i, I'm going to use a pro property that all quadratics have that states that a quadratic has the form of x squared minus the sum of the roots of the quadratic equation times x plus the product of the two roots that the quadratic has. So using 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i as the two roots of a quadratic, this quadratic would be x squared minus, from the formula, the minus sign, the sum of the roots, the sum of, in this case, 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i times x. Then we have a plus sign. And then comes the product of the roots, the product of 1 plus 3i times 1 minus 3i. When setting that equal to 0, I have a linear factor, x minus 5, times a quadratic, which after I eventually multiply out, will give me the x to the third cubic equation that has the three roots that I started with. The next thing I'm going to have to do is simplify the quadratic part. There's 1 plus 3i plus 1 minus 3i to simplify, and 1 plus 3i times 1 minus 3i to simplify. The beginning of this equation will stay as x minus 5 for the time being. Then the quadratic is x squared minus, combining the like terms in 1 plus 3i plus 1 minus 3i, the imaginary terms add up to 0. You are left with just 1 plus 1, which is 2, so the first two terms in the quadratic are x squared minus 2x. Then comes the product of the roots. To find the product of the roots, we have to do a little bit more algebra. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3i is, or I should say 1 times negative 3i is minus 3i. 3i times 1 is plus 3i. And positive 3i times negative 3i is negative 9i squared. The middle terms add up to 0, and I'm left with 1 minus 9i squared. i squared is negative 1. 1 minus 9 times negative 1 
is 1 plus 9, and 1 plus 9 is 10, which means the final factor of the quadratic is plus 10. x minus 5 times x squared minus 2x plus 10 represents the cubic equation that has the three roots, 5, 1 plus 3i, and 1 minus 3i. I have one more step before I'm going to call it my final answer. I'll multiply x minus 5 times x squared minus 2x plus 10, and I'll call that polynomial equation my final answer. Multiplying x minus 5 times x squared minus 2x plus 10 will involve multiplying or distributing the x to all three terms in the second factor and then distributing the negative 5 to all three terms in the second factor. First is distributing the x. I'll take x times x squared, which is x to the third, then x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared, and x times 10 is 10x. Then I'll distribute negative 5 times the three terms in the second factor. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5 times negative 2x, a negative times a negative is positive 10x. And finally, negative 5 times positive 10 is negative 50. This is the polynomial that when set equal to 0 will have the three roots that we started with in this problem. 5, 1 plus 3i, and 1 minus 3i. One more step. Let's combine like terms. There's a negative 2x squared and a negative 5x squared that can, be, that can be combined. A positive 10x, another positive 10x that can be combined, which means that our final answer in polynomial form is x to the third, negative 2x squared, minus 5x squared is negative 7x squared, 10x and 10x makes 20x, and the constant of negative 50 is the final term in our equation, which is equal to 0. The cubic equation, which has roots 5, 1 plus 3i, and 1 minus 3i, is x to the third, minus 7x squared, plus 20x, minus 50, equals 0.